Today we are going to be installing the Limba Strakes and I've spent a lot of time reading the book, looking at all the pictures and um, <laughs> struggling with all sorts of different devices to hold the, um, the Strakes in place. For those of you who are still a little uncertain as to what the various pieces mean and um, how they relate to each other, I just thought I'd go back to that um, illustration that David had in the book and just go through my understanding of, of how the pieces relate to each other. This is the limbus streak. This is the first streak and this is the second streak. This is the limbus channel or passage and of course the keelson. And the limbus board would span between the keelson and the first limbus streak. And the distance here in the center is 11 inches. The second little challenge I'm having is that when I try to line up the 24 foot centers for the butt joints, um, my frames are not lining up exactly on 24 inch centers. <laughs> and so, first I was panicking, and then I realized really that that's not the, the main issue. The main issue is that when you decide on a particular frame, um, to have a butt joint, um, then every fourth um, streak, um, the, the joint, the butt joint must be on uh, that same frame. And I've come to the conclusion since there actually isn't a plan um, of exactly how this, the inner planks were um, were placed. Having listened to all the advice and followed all the read all the instructions, I've come up with my own work plan, which is going to be just fine. The first challenge we have is where do we put the start of the streak? Um, some of them have it as high as all the way up here, and some of them have it um, here. In fact, in Greg's plan, it actually disappears under the mass step here. Um, and then where does the first butt joint um, take place? Does it take here? Or as in one suggestion back here? Um, the truth is so long as they are approximately on 24 foot centers and that we have three planks between each one, it really doesn't matter. And that we are consistent that every fourth plank the butt joint will be in the same place. So that's really the key criteria. And that's what we're going to do. The first thing we've done, of course, is to cut out a number of four and a half inch planks that are 12, 12 inches wide. Um, and I'm making these out of juniper, so it'll be a very slight variation between the frames and the planking wood. The end of the first trick is tapered and this is done by drawing a line and then putting it on a flat sander and sanding it down. And then the end of this is two inches. The simplest way I've found to do this is to set the saw to do a two inch cut and then running the piece uh, against the saw, which gives me a nice clean um, square line and really makes it very easy to do. Then it's just a matter of taking a sanding board and sanding it down very carefully and then of course doing a trial fit and you'll see those reverse clamps back in use. Of course to hold this in place down um, we now need clamps that are going to push it down and there are quite a few um, that are shown in the, in the book. The first one that I developed is these reverse um, clamps which are standard clamps with just the end turned around but those don't do a perfect job. So the second option is the one that we saw um, shown in the book and this is a variation of theirs. So it just screws in and I can they can slip into the into the gun port holes and I can place uh, a base on it and I can also just put a nut on it. And as I screw it down, it'll push, it'll push the piece down flat. As I indicated earlier, I'm using um, epoxy to put these pieces in. So a very small amount of epoxy on each of the frames. 
and then I would actually cover the limber streak fairly right across the whole bottom although not very heavily um, and then it's just a matter of um, taking the planned clamps that you decide to use and clamping the piece in place and then once you do this um, it should hold it fairly fairly well <laughs> if there's one thing about this hobby it's finding ways to dig yourself out of a hole last night in my enthusiasm um, to stick the first limber streak, I forgot to cut the rebate for the limber board on the first piece. And so now I'm having to figure out how to do that stuck in a model without taking the whole piece back. Of course I knew exactly how to do it on the table saw, which is the piece I prepared beforehand, and then picked up another piece. Um, so it's a genuine screw up. So the solution actually is not that difficult after you think about it for a while. Just to make up uh, a little plank that slides along the board and allows me to put one of my very small chisels and chisel the rebate out. Here's the little sliding piece that will slide along the, um, the strake that's already installed, um, leaving just enough room to take out the rebate. Of course, the correct way to do this is to set the blade at two and a half inches high and two and a half inches depth, and then simply then mark the piece that you don't want to cut beyond, and just be careful of your fingers, of course. Um, but the blade should be lower than the board. If you set it correctly, there should be a very slight lip that needs to come off. It will come off with your hand. You can use a chisel to take it off as well. And you have a perfect mark or rebate that's two and a half inches deep and two and a half inches into the string. All done and ready to soak. I found that if I put it soaking, um, when I see it drop to the floor, which means it's totally saturated, like that other piece, then it's ready to clamp. One of the things that has always worried me when I wet planks or steam bend planks is what we're in effect doing is adding moisture back into the wood. And um, I'm certainly going to leave 24 hours. I've soaked this piece maybe a little bit too much. So I'm going to leave 24 hours before I stick it. And I will stick it with epoxy as I've been doing with all these pieces. The other thing that happened with all my fancy clamps um, is on this one I actually pressured the gun port, the top gun port sill out and I'm going to have to restick it. So again it's meant to hold it in place not force it in place. You need to let the um, bending of the wood and the drying of it in a new, play, in a new position um, let it dry over time and not force it into position. We're coming up to the 10 minute mark and I still have a lot to cover so we'll break this part into two sessions and i'll see you in the next video